If you're migrating from Setlist Maker to Band Helper, it's pretty easy to export your Setlist Maker database and then import it into your new Band Helper account. This contains all your songs, set lists, custom fields, etc. But it only contains links to any documents or recordings that you attached to your songs. If you are using documents or recordings in Setlist Maker, you'll have to import those separately into your Band Helper account, and this video will show you how. First, let's log into the Band Helper website and go to the Repertoire Documents or Repertoire Recordings page. After importing from Setlist Maker, you'll see items here that have a file size of zero. This means Band Helper imported some info about the files, but not the files themselves. You won't be able to use these files in Band Helper until you upload them, and at that point you'll see the file sizes shown here. At this point, you might also find documents in the list that don't belong in this project. Since Setlist Maker can't specify which database a document belongs to, it might export document metadata that you don't need in a given Band Helper project. You can clean these up now. Just click the checkbox for each document that doesn't belong in this project, and click the Batch Delete button. Importing your documents or recordings is pretty easy if you already have them in a folder on your computer. You can select the folder and zip it. This is called Compress on a Mac. Then go back to the website and click the Batch Import button at the top of the Documents or Recordings page and select the zip file. Remember to upload documents on the Documents page and recordings on the Recordings page. And don't use the Batch Upload button on the Songs page. That's for adding songs to your account, not document or recording files like we're doing here. After selecting the zip file, click Submit and wait. Depending on the size of your file, it could take up to 10 minutes to upload documents or up to an hour to upload recordings. When the upload finishes, the page will reload and you should see the file sizes for each file. And the icon appears so you can view the document or listen to the recording. If you upload a zip file and some items still have a file size of zero, this means those files weren't in the folder you uploaded. If you have a lot of missing files, you can gather them into another folder and zip and upload that. If you only have a few missing, it's probably easier to click the edit button for a missing file then click the Upload a File button, select the file on your computer, and save. You can repeat this for each missing file. If you upload a zip file and you get an error message that the file is too big, you can throw away that zip file and make another folder next to the original. Then move half of the files into the second folder. Then zip each folder and upload one and then the other. If the files are still too big, you can keep splitting until each file is under the size limit. And you can look at the size of the zip file before uploading it to check that. Now, we assumed earlier that all your documents or recordings are already collected in a folder on your computer. If that's not the case, and you don't know where they all are, here's what to do. For documents, you can get them out of Setlist Maker using iTunes file sharing. Connect your mobile device to your computer, then open iTunes. Select the device, then click File Sharing, and scroll through the apps and select Setlist Maker. All the documents that you've added to Setlist Maker are shown here. Now you can make a folder on your computer and drag all the documents into that folder. Then zip the folder and upload it as described above. Collecting your recordings is harder because those are stored in iTunes and there's no way to copy them all at once. 
but you can view your music library in iTunes, find a recording, Right-click it and select Show in Finder. Then make a new folder on your computer and copy it there. Please note, you should copy, not move this file. So hold down the Option key as you drag it. And then you won't lose the original copy that's in iTunes. Unfortunately, you'll have to repeat this for every recording. So instead of moving the files to a folder and zipping and batch uploading, it might be easier just to click each edit button in your recordings list and then select and upload the files one at a time. If you imported multiple Setlist Maker databases into separate Bandhelper projects, you'll have to repeat these steps for each project. From the Documents or Recordings list, you can change projects using the Projects pop-up at the top of the page and see what items still need to be uploaded for each project. Fortunately, a batch import will ignore files that aren't present in a project, so if it's easier for you, you can collect all the files for all the projects into one zip file, then upload the same zip file for each project. Bandhelper will take the files it needs for that project and ignore the rest. This might seem like a lot of work, but please remember how long it originally took to set up your data in Setlist Maker, and realize that it will take some work, but not nearly as much, to migrate it to Bandhelper. Remember also that Bandhelper syncs all these documents and recordings to all the devices in your band. So with a little extra work now, you're getting a major benefit that Setlist Maker was never able to offer. Thanks for your patience, and thanks for switching to Bandhelper.